guided math is my jam now. But back in the day when I was first learning about it, I did not take the time to process how I was actually going to implement it with my students. It was through trial and lots and lots of error that I actually came up with a system that worked for me in my classroom. I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. So today we're gonna to talk about some of the common mistakes that teachers tend to make when starting guided math. So if you're ready, give this video a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let's dive in and get started. My first experience with guided math was this. My principal sent me to a half day workshop over math centers. I left there feeling like I could do it. I really thought that I could just go and get started. I had pretty good classroom management in place and my kids knew how to play games. So I thought like, why wouldn't this work? Do you think that it worked? <laughs> I was so wrong. The first mistake that I made was I had no classroom management in place for guided math. I didn't implement routines and procedures. I really thought that I could just throw out some games and my kids would play them while I pulled some kids to a small group table to do something that I didn't have a solid plan for. I didn't know what I was gonna teach them at the small group table. I just knew that I was gonna do something. You guys, do you think that that worked? Because I'm here to tell you that it did not. It was total, it was total chaos. And just like the beginning of a new school year, when you spend so much time implementing routines and procedures, you have to do the same thing for guided math. We have to take the time to teach our students how to work in math centers and how to work independently. If your students are familiar with only whole group teaching during a math lesson, and one day you just decide to split them up into random groups and rotate them around the classroom, more than likely it is not going to work. How do I know? Because I have been there. <laughs> you have to take the time to teach your students how do they transition? How do they work with a partner? How do they not work with a partner? You even have to teach them how to work with manipulatives because remember we want to make math hands on. You have to teach them what to do and even model what not to do. And you have to practice this over and over again. My number one tip for training students successfully to learn guided math is to have a transition signal. You can use anything from a simple bell, but my favorite is actually a wireless doorbell. I'm gonna drop the link to this one in the description of this video. What I love about this one is that you just simply plug it into any outlet and then you have this little remote. And this remote makes the doorbell chime. This particular doorbell, it has probably 50 different chimes. The kids think that it's really fun to pick what chime they want to be for their transition signal and we would practice what they would do when they hear this signal. Do they continue talking? Do they continue working? No, when they hear this sound, they stop what they're doing, they turn and they face the teacher for further instructions. And we practice this over and over and over again. We use this particular signal, we use it for transitioning. We use it for when it's time to clean up and so much more. So this one is definitely my favorite. It can typically take up to five weeks to properly train your students on how to successfully participate in guided math. So don't rush into things. Take the time to implement routines and procedures because if you don't, it's going to make or break how your small groups go. Now, mistake number two is over prepping materials. Do you guys, do you see this picture? I'm not gonna tell you how far back I had to scroll on Instagram to find this. <laughs> do not do this, okay? So the day after I attended that half day workshop I was telling you about, when I got home, I went and I made file folder games and I made copies and laminated them for every single student. 
there is absolutely no need <laughs> to run off copies for every single one of your students and then spend an entire day laminating every piece. Don't do what I did. That's the joy of guided math. More than likely, your students are going to be working together in groups of four to five kids. Another tip, I would not suggest going over six in a group. The reason why I share this is because you don't need as many copies because they can share their materials. So a few tips I would suggest is that one, if you are using task cards, I like to print them on black and white copies onto different colored paper. This way I know which set belongs to different groups and this also helps with differentiation. Print maybe one, maybe two sets at the most and then allow your kids to share. If it's a partner game, I make no more than three sets simply because since they're in partners, you don't need a ton of materials. Another hack is that if you are playing a game, you can put that activity inside of a plastic sleeve and students can write on them with an Expo marker and then it just wipes off. This helps cut down on copies and they can be used over and over again. Mistake number three was another big one. You guys, I never switched up my groups in the beginning. Why did I do this? So guided math is very different than reading in that you don't have ability levels that you can follow. And so this is why it's really important to constantly change up your guided math groups. My suggestion would be change up your groups every four to six weeks or anytime a new concept is introduced. I used data from pre-assessments and ESGI to help me form my groups. And then I used my guided math binder to help me keep everything organized and in one place. Just think, a student might struggle in one area of math, but they might excel in the next. So it's important to use your mathematical data and have mathematical conversations with your students to better serve them. This is going to help you properly place them in the proper groups. The last mistake that I made in the beginning was that I always overplanned. Have you ever bought a unit off of TPT and it had a manipulative activity and then you had interactive notebooks and then you wanted to play a game and then you wanted to do a craft? It had so many awesome things that you wanted to try to squeeze it all in. When you plan so much in your whole group lesson, your kids are missing out on the core instruction that's taking place at the small group table. I knew that in order to make my small group successful, that I was going to have to condense my whole group instruction. My biggest takeaway with this was to keep things simple. I had to think of how I wanted my schedule to look and how much I wanted to dedicate to each of the components of guided math. I knew that in order to fit in small groups and math stations, I needed to condense my whole group time. I actually have a free training that can help you do just this. So if you're interested in making more time for guided math in your classroom, just click the link in the description of this video. So there you have it. I wanna know what mistakes have you made and learned from your guided math journey? Keep me updated, I wanna know, drop me a comment. I hope you guys have a blessed one and I will see you in the next video. Bye.